I received quite a few requests from people to explain what Roam from Position does in the game Football Manager. And in order for me to do that, I'm going to travel back in time. Yes, we're going to go to 2009 and I'm going to show you how this instruction came to be. This is Football Manager 2009. We're traveling back in time. Yes, we're going to take a look at one of the older games. And these were all the team instructions. Back in the day, okay, when you go to all the team instructions, uh, they were sliders and notches, but you don't see like, you know, things like be more expressive. And then when you go to play instructions, you'll notice something here called free roll. Most of the roles in the game, you could just go to any one of these roles, pick a role and then change it to a free roll. This included defenders as well. And oddly enough, yeah, even the goalkeeper. So we had all these options to create a free role. And that's where this instruction comes from. Today, when you go into the game of Football Manager, that little tick box for free role, it doesn't exist anymore. Now we get it as a play instruction that is either hard-coded into the role or exists as an option we can use in the game depending on the role we've chosen. Roam from position is an instruction that allows a player to leave his designated position to assist the team during an attacking or a defensive transition. So the player may not always be there when you need him. Some of these roles in the game like the roaming playmaker, the Mazala, they are hard-coded, right? So you can't really choose not to ask him to roam from position they do it as part and parcel of their role now some other roles you have the option the white midfielder here on support we can choose to ask him to leave his designated position by ticking this box over here but what exactly does this do to do that i'm going to show you a couple of examples now roam from position essentially he's just going to drift around a lot more now we have to be very careful with this instruction because if we choose the wrong player for this instruction, like um, you've chosen a player who's got great off the ball but poor positioning, what you might end up seeing is he's great at, you know, finding spaces between the lines uh, to receive a pass during an attacking transition. But when you lose the ball, he might not be there. Players might play the pass thinking he's there, but he hasn't gotten back yet. So you might end up giving away the ball. This is very important to remember. If you choose to use roam from position, then you have to choose the right kind of player because your tactic could fall apart if you've chosen a player with poor mentals. So we've got this tactic here. I've got a roaming playmaker here and I'm going to change this tactic slightly to show you the differences in the way he moves. When you play a roaming playmaker in the center, he's probably going to drift around quite a fair bit. But if you're looking at this tactic, we've got an inverted winger here. So there's a strong possibility he's going to drift the he might favor the right side a bit more, but occasionally he'll drift to the left. We can confirm this by going into the details of the analytics for the game. Now, if you go to the team in question and we find this player, normally people like to look at average position, but average position is not going to help you. It's just going to show him smack in the center relative to the rest of the formation. What we need to see are two bits of information. The first is the heat map. The heat map We'll show a pretty even shade here. Now, there's a bit more in the center that's understandable because of the roles that we've used. And then you can notice there are spotches here as well. He's drifted to the left too. Then the other thing you want to check out are passes received. This tells us where he has been on the pitch to receive passes. As you can see, he's all over the pitch, right? So he's been here. This probably to receive a throw. Here, a pass. Here on the left, you can, you can even go into the highlights and it'll confirm that during portions where the team is moving the ball from left to right, he's even appeared there. So here we can go to the 2D screen. It gives us a better idea. This is our defender. Our roaming playmaker is nowhere. Somewhere here, right? So he's moved to the right. And then as the ball drifts out, you can see he's taken up a central position. He comes here to support play even without the focus. And he's supporting play as we move from one side of the pitch to the other. 
So whenever you go into the game, you will find that uh, roaming playmakers on the center is going to support the left and he's going to support the right. What happens when we move him towards the right? Then he's going to be supporting the right more than the left, but you will see that he drifts around a bit. He's not anchored to the center of the pitch, but he drifts around uh, looking to support the transition when you are moving from defense to attack or from attack to defense. Here we've got another setup. You'll notice my roaming playmaker is offset to the right slightly. We can go to the analytical data once again, go to our playmaker, go to his heat map, and you'll notice there's a slight difference between the two heat maps. Now, he's, he's heavily favoring this side of the pitch, but occasionally he does move to the left, he does move to the left, but as a roaming playmaker, he's supporting play this way. Occasionally helps us uh, dropping deep to defend. He's supporting play as high up here as possible. And then you will notice there are portions here as well. Uh, and then what you just have to do is um, to see the kind of passes he receives. which just will tell us where he's been on the pitch, right? You can see this as well. So on the left, he receives a pass. A roaming playmaker is here in the center, right? So he's, he's vacated this position to drift here to support play. He looks for space and he makes himself available. If the pass is played to him, he comes out, he supports the left. Now, remember, his position was actually here, but he's drifted all the way to the left to support play. This is something that roaming, uh, the roam from position instruction actually uh, does in the game. It makes uh, players leave their designated position to support play. And if you play a roaming playmaker on this on this right side, he could also end up over here to support play in the half spaces. This makes roam from position a particularly good instruction, but you want to be careful how you use it. To put that play instruction to good use, you need players with the right kind of attributes. An easy way to find out, go into the game, compare a deep line playmaker on support to a roaming playmaker. A deep line playmaker on support holds position, a roaming playmaker doesn't. So when you look at a deep line playmaker on support, you'll notice um, there are certain attributes uh, that he doesn't really require. He doesn't really require a lot of physical attributes. But more importantly, a deep line playmaker on support doesn't need concentration. But when you play a player with a roam from position play instruction or a role that has roam from position like a roaming playmaker, then certain attributes become very important. He needs concentration, he needs physical attributes, he needs good work rate. So whenever you choose any player and you want him to use roam from position, absolutely need to make sure he's got the right mentals. Because when you fail to choose the right player, you're going to see transitions break down. If a player has roam from position as a play instruction, he could end up not being around for a defensive phase in the transition. What about those roles that are on the flanks? Like you might want to use an inverted winger and tell him to roam from position. So we've gone back to this tactic. Now the inverted winger, you can always tell the inverted winger to roam from position, but we're going to see what he does without roaming from position first. So here we've got a Politano playing as the inverted winger. If we look at the um, data, his heat map suggests that he's mostly on this side of the pitch. Pass receive indicate most of the passes he receives are on the left. There's one occasional outlier over here. So this is where he spends most of the time. So we've taken the same role and added roam from position. And uh, let's take a look at the analytical data. His average position will still be the same, right? Uh, then we take a look at his heat map for Politano. Now you see, while the, earlier there was a clear shade here, now there's occasionally times when he's appearing in the center over here in some moments when he's here. Now what we want to do next is look at his passes received. Generally, I find that when players are playing on the flanks, there is a bit of movement, a bit more, um, between the channels and between the spaces. Um, the spaces between players, rather. Okay, so here we've got Politano uh, somewhere over here, right? So he's here on this side of the pitch. Uh, you know, he's drifting around looking for space. Um, now he roams and he comes inside, he picks up the ball, then he moves into the center. These are small little movements. That, out on the flanks, you don't normally see a player go from the right flank to the left flank a lot. Most of the time, they be they are going to move out of their position slightly, but you won't expect to see him like you know swing to the left hand side of the pitch, which is just extreme. But you can see most of the movement is still right towards this side of the pitch. And then if we lay the heat map for Politano, and we'll see that see it fits the heat map. You see this one. Some, sometimes here there's only two 
times that he's been in this position. Um, but most of the time, he's still here. He roams around. But when you're playing on the flanks, you don't see so much of uh, drifting around, right? You, do, you don't see them drifting to the left-hand side of the pitch, largely because there's already someone there in your team. When it comes to roam from position in the final third, right, as a play instruction on some of these roles, there is a chance that these players may not help you defend. Why? Because they may not even be there. So if their mental attributes aren't good enough, then sometimes you've got to reconsider whether you can play again pressing. I mean, can you imagine if you have an inverted winger who doesn't help you again press an opponent because he wasn't paying attention to the phase in play? That could happen with Rome from position. Once you understand how Rome from position plays in the center and out on the flanks, then you kind of are able to create different kinds of setups. Now, I have one 4 3 one, two that's just like this, which has got three roaming playmakers. I know it sounds crazy, but if you find the right kind of players, yeah, it can actually work because then you've got three guys in the center with the right kind of attributes who know when to drop deep and when to go up the pitch to help you in the transitions. The beautiful thing about something like this is because of the way they roam, this guy can end up sometimes out on the flanks. He can end up here, but the problem with that kind of a setup is you also need good defenders because sometimes these roaming playmakers can be up so high up the pitch that if you lose the ball in transition, you could be left exposed. Roll from position can be a lot of fun, but you got to be careful. I mean, look, I have a lot of fun with roll from position. I have got tactics which have got five players roaming from position. Sometimes even I don't know who's going to score a goal. Uh, that's the beauty of that little instruction because um, you definitely need players to pull it off. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video and you found it useful. If you have any questions, you guys know where to find me. Once again, I want to thank you for your continued support of this channel. You make these kind of shows possible for the rest of the community. You guys, please stay safe, stay healthy. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.